The Malice series should have been great. It could have been great, but it isn't great. A duology of novel-slash-comic-book hybrids by Chris Wooding, the series revolves around two friends named Seth and Katie, who venture through the comic book dimension of Malice and try to overthrow the evil ruler of the place, Tall Jake. At first I was skeptical of the idea of a hybrid book-slash-comic, thinking it was either a scheme to win respect from parents and librarians or just a way to get out of writing and drawing a full comic book. But this is actually one of the things that the series does well. While there is much more text than actual pictures, the comic sections are still well paced and delivered, and the reason for the constant switching is actually explained somewhat cleverly in the story, although I won't spoil it here. The art itself is also mixed. While the humans in the series are drawn somewhat crudely, the monsters and non-humans are well depicted. The settings and backdrops, though, are by far the best drawn, showing the world of malice in detailed and beautiful artwork. The writing sections aren't nearly as outstanding. They aren't bad, but they aren't great either. Pretty average as far as books for the age group go. And speaking of age group, I should probably warn you that these books are not intended for younger readers, as there are a few bloody scenes as well as lots of disturbing content. Well, since I've spent the entire review up to this point saying mostly positive things about the books, you're probably wondering why I don't like them. The answer is simple. Halfway through the second book, the series, for some reason, throws out all its inventive storylines and complex character development out the window in favor of just getting the story over as quickly as possible. Before I get into this, though, I should probably explain the story a bit. As I said before, the main characters are two kids named Seth and Katie. The story has two main settings, England and the fictional realm of Malice, a world that supposedly exists inside an underground comic book by the same name. It's actually far more complicated than that, but I can't explain it without spoiling too much. Anyways, there's a rumor in England that if you perform a short ritual and call the name of Malice's ruler Tall Jake, you'll disappear in the night and reappear inside the comic book, an alternate dimension full of dangerous and evil monsters and villains. Seth and Katie both become involved when their friend Luke goes missing after performing the ritual and, desperate, they go in after him. This is the setup for the first book. Malice, while somewhat impressive for its nice art and creative story, it does a good setup and some creative plot twist, isn't really that spectacular. The second book in the series, Havoc, is a different story. Or at least, the first half of the second book is. In the first half of Havoc, the book takes everything the first installment did right and builds on it. The art looks better, the written sections are more impressive, and the story actually has some genuine, genuinely scary moments. The characters, as well as the world of Malice itself, are better developed. All in all, the first half of Havoc, while still not perfect, was definitely a large improvement on the first book, and well worth reading. Halfway through Havoc, though, something went horribly wrong. Up until that point, the story was well-paced, another thing the books did fairly well. Midway through Havoc, the pacing speeds up dramatically, almost as if the, hurry, almost as if the series was in a hurry to finish itself. It seems like there was originally a third book planned, but cancelled during the writing of the second one, causing one and a half books worth of story to be crammed into one half of a book. This is a shame, because there's a lot of parts of the story that should have been further looked into, such as the city, Malice's capital, the other realms of Malice, as Malice is split up into different themed countries and cities called realms, and especially Tall Jake and the Dead House. Dead, the Dead House is Tall Jake's fortress, and the source of much of the series' disturbing content. Tall Jake, as previously mentioned, is the main villain of the series. He's one of the most interesting characters in the books, as well as one of the most tragically underdeveloped, being mostly your stereotypical big scary villain for most of the series. I say he's interesting but underdeveloped because towards the end of the series, he actually starts taking on a complex and interesting character, but by then it's so late in the story that it hardly matters. Another thing that should have been looked into is Jake's for fortress, the Dead House. We only see it for about 15 pages, but those 15 pages are some of the creepiest parts of the books. In the interest of not spoiling anything, that's all I'm saying. In short, this was a duology ruined by squashing a story that needed three books into just two. 
I'm sure that had the series been given that much-needed third book, it would have fared much better than it did with just the two. Despite its flaws, however, I would still advise checking this book out if you can. It's not worth buying, but if your library has a copy, borrow it. The series still has a lot to offer, and even if you don't like them, they don't really take that long to get through. They're definitely worth the time it takes to read them.